Snow White were formed in Chicago in 1981 by guitarist Ian Tafoya, his brother Sparks on bass and their cousin Nicky on drums. They belonged to the early wave of speed metal bands in the US and they thought it would be kind of funny to call the band Snow White, first spelled like this, later they changed it to this, because they were all black guys. Nicole Lee was their manager at first, but then she joined the band as a singer. In an early interview with Metal Forces magazine, they described it as sometimes difficult to get first local gigs in the Chicago area because some racists had a problem with black men and a white woman in the same band, but that couldn't stop them. Snow White went into a studio for just six hours to record four songs for their first demo. One song called Hellbent made it onto the compilation Metal Massacre 3 in 1983. The Metal Massacre records were kind of the underground bible in those days, having introduced for example Sirith Ungol and Metallica to the public with Volume 1, or Armored Saint and Savage Grace with Volume 2. Volume 3 included Slayer, Bitch, Tyrant and many more along Snow White. Quickly Snow White recorded the debut album All Hail to Thee, which was released by Enigma Records in 1984, later licensed by Steamhammer Records for Europe. Musically there were no complaints, but the album included only 7 songs with 17 minutes playing time, sold for the price of a full album, which made many fans feel like they weren't really getting value for money here. Snow White were playing some shows as opening act for bands like Metallica and Raven. In 1985 the second album Kick em When They're Down followed, which contained only 5 songs at 16 minutes, definitely only a mini album. White ended their contract with Enigma and signed with a small label from California, Erica Records, who released a live album called Live Suicide in 1986, recorded in Cleveland. The quality was poor, it seemed more like a public rehearsal. Needless to say, at 23 minutes it was very short again. The band toured a lot around 1987, but didn't get support from their record company either for touring or by promotion of the album, so they were still not making progress on the business side. The original lineup had fallen apart, only Ian and Nicole were left. 1988, the new studio album Act of God was released. Scott Schaefer was credited as drummer and Alex Olvera as bass player, although he was in fact not yet on the album. On this album finally everything seemed to be alright. 
with a proper playing time over 45 minutes, improved songwriting and a more professional label with a reasonable promotion budget, namely Roadrunner Records. What could possibly go wrong with Snow White's rise to success now? First, the cover artwork is abysmal. This pink and yellow atrocity hurts the eye, which is why I showed it only in the smallest possible size. Very few record shop customers would feel tempted to give it a listen. And then singer Nicole Lee left the band. Debbie Gunn from Sentinel Beast was hired as a replacement. They played one tour together, which was not entirely convincing, so Debbie decided to leave and join Ice Age instead. Snow White were dropped by Roadrunner and had to start all over again. After attempts to find a new female singer hadn't succeeded, Snow White split in 1990. They continued with vocalist Brian Trock under the new name Cyclone Temple. Their first album, I Hate Therefore I Am from 1991, includes mostly stuff originally written for Snow White. Check it out and until next time.